Hey, Ronnie. Hello. Hey, you just went through a big uh, wedding ceremony for your daughter, huh? Bazinga. <laughs> That's what it means in this case. <laughs> Not what you thought. You know, these days guests aren't as familiar with wedding etiquette and will likely make at least one of these fox passes. I'm I sorry. It's faux pas. Faux pas at your wedding. It's not okay, but knowing these ahead of time will help you roll with it on the big day. Ronnie, I'm sure some of these on this list are gonna, um, it's gonna be a ball on the tee yeah. for you. Yeah. And you're gonna whack them. And we're gonna do that next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I am Lou Gallagher. Or Ed Ronnie. Nice to be with you today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. It is greatly appreciated weddings. A lot of people like to get married over the Christmas holiday, somewhere between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Coming uh, right up. A lot of those are based on tax reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not real romantic, yeah. but at the same time. That serves a purpose. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk about some wedding etiquette and rude things people will do at your wedding. The first one up is Instagram the ceremony. That is so gauche. Yeah, that's that's awful. Like an Egg McMuffin. Yeah. <laughs> now more than ever, I worked it in. Dang, you did. Couples are choosing to have an unplugged ceremony where guests are asked to turn off their cell phones. That is such a great idea. Yeah. However, there's always one asshole in the group. Yeah. We even had a sign at a wedding we've seen that specifically said to turn off your phone and be present with us. And yet, some people, again, uh, some people still had their phones up taking photos as if they were at a Bruce Springsteen concert. Mm. And on top of that, they immediately posted the pictures on social media right. and tagged the couple in them. That is so not cool. No. They had an intimate wedding for a reason. They didn't want those moments shared with thousands of people, just the 60 or so people present. So if you're at all concerned about this happening at your own wedding or friends, family, you could have the officiant remind everyone before the professional starts that this is an unplugged ceremony. And I don't mean like Eric Clapton and Layla. Right. Okay. It's, well, and you're paying uh, probably around $300 to have the uh, ceremony videotape. Yeah. And if somebody's phone goes off during the vows, mm -hmm. I'm going to be upset if I'm paying $30,000 for a wedding. Yeah, I would be too. So, yeah, I mean, and you know what? You were invited in to the wedding to be a part of the wedding. So put your phone down, pay attention to what's happening, and be a part of the wedding. And realize that social media is not the end-all, be-all. Right. You know, I mean, some things are bigger than your social media yeah. Twitter account or yep. whatever. All right, this next one up. Oh, and this is huge. When people don't RSVP. Rude. And then they show up. How rude. Yeah. So, if hey, if you don't RSVP... We're going to assume you're not going to be there. No. You don't have to RSVP if you're not going to be there. Right. I get it. Uh, but, hey, if you're going to go, at least let us know. Uh, this uh, goes on to say that uh, I vow to cherish the next wedding invitation I get in the mail because I know the insanity that is designing, ordering, and paying for pieces of paper that most people of your guests will just throw in the trash. Yeah. Uh, but you know what's more of an insult than checking my custom foil-pressed invitation that I spent hours designing? Not responding. Mm. Invitations are vital for getting an accurate guest count, which impacts rental supplies, food orders, and much more. By not responding the date listed on the, by the date listed on the invitation, you're hindering the couple from making reservations on time. Yeah, a lot of people <clears throat> count on it. I got to tell you that wedding venues, um, if you're up against the clock, it's tough. Um, if you want a, a Saturday wedding, which, which most, most people do, uh, there's probably going to be at very popular wedding venues, going to be maybe two or three weddings there. 
Yeah, with an hour in between each one, maybe. Right. You know? And so you have to have an accurate count because when you pay for a wedding, they need to know how many chairs, how many tables. Sure. Uh, the caterer needs to know how much food. Cake. Cake. Uh, it's all dependent on getting those RSVPs back and timely. Uh, there's another RSVP issue down the road, but we'll cross that bridge in a minute. Don't be a dickwad. You know, respond and in a timely matter. Uh, matter. If you're thinking that maybe you're going to have tickets to a baseball game that weekend, then just just say I'm sorry. Right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Right now, I, I, I'm not going to be able to make. It. I have another obligation. You don't have to go into it. Yep. Um, but you know, at least let the person know. And Ronnie was saying, if you're not going to send back, you know, the RSVP, we can assume you're not coming. Right. That's not right. Yeah. That isn't right. Because you know what? We've already put stamps on the envelope. All you have to do is check yes. Yeah. And plus one yes, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Exactly. We've done the hardest part for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I would tell you that when you get the invitation, don't just set it aside. Right. Check your calendar. Do if it then. you can go, do it right now. Drop in the mailbox right away. Yeah. It's a huge help. Uh, I, I just, I, I think you owe it to the couple. If they were thoughtful enough to invite you to their special day, yeah. hello. Gunk, gunk, gunk. <laughs> All right, arriving late. So rude. Awful. So awfully rude. Now, we know there are emergencies that take place. There's accidents that can happen. Right. Traffic zones where there's a construction. Uh, imagine this. You're about to walk down the aisle. And wedding guests are trying to sneak in the back of the venue or even walk down the aisle behind you. God, this actually happened at one wedding and the wedding coordinator had to scramble to send them through another entrance. Rule of thumb, pay attention, Bruce. <laughs> if you're late to a wedding and the ceremony has already begun, you should wait and join the guests at the reception. Your uh, FOMO, fear of missing out, isn't as important as not disturbing one of the most, the most important 15 minutes of your friend's life. Yep. If you're late, you missed it. Yep. You know, it, it, it's like when your, your teacher in high school used to be, they close the door and lock it. 15 minutes. Go out and you skip your class. Yep, exactly. I mean, it. this just kind of goes back. And I think it's, you know, kids, they don't have any, they just don't have a sense of time like we did. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, if I'm five minutes early, I'm on time. Mm -hmm. If I'm on time, I'm late. So, you know what? It takes, get in the car 10 minutes early and, you know, arrive in plenty of time Make sure, you know, go to the bathroom, do what you need to do. Because that's another thing. You don't want to get up during the ceremony and go use the restroom or... I am not the reason that we are late as a couple. It takes me 15 minutes tops. Right. And that's with shoes and everything. Yep. 15 minutes. Shave, shampoo, whatever. My wife, it's like an hour to an hour and a half. And then you know what happens is you're running late now for your event. Right. You're going to argue in the car. Right. Uh, you're going to get to where you're going in a bad mood. Be on time. Yeah. Just set aside enough time so that you can leave with plenty of time to spare. Especially if it's not something that's, you know, 10 minutes across town. Right. Uh, like our wedding was a little bit of a destination wedding. It was a little over an hour away from home. Yeah, here. it was about... 50 miles or 60 yeah. miles. Yeah, and so, you know, you have to allow plenty of time. Obviously, we stayed, we spent the night at a hotel, but most of the guests just drove down that day. So yeah. they had to allow plenty of time, and it was a an evening wedding, and so there's going to be some traffic. So, hey, just try to, try to allot some time. Yeah. All right, this next one. This may not seem like much, but it's a it's kind of a big faux pas also. Fox pas? Yes, and that's bringing a gift to the wedding itself. To, to the ceremony. To the ceremony. You don't do that. No. It's no. tacky. Very uh, tacky. <clears throat> it's a cardinal wedding rule. It's kind of been lost over time. Uh, you should never bring a wedding gift to the actual wedding. Etiquette rules say that you should mail the couple a gift within a couple weeks of the receiving the RSVP. 
Uh, you can also, you know, most of the receptions have a table set up for yeah. gifts. Yeah, yeah, um, several. If it's just a gift card or if it's uh, a money order, obviously that can be, you know, mailed to them. I wouldn't hand anything to the couple during the wedding. It's pretty, you got so many things going on. There's a lot of moving pieces to a wedding and even to a reception. And a woman always has on her mind the entire day, I want this day to be perfect. Yeah, right. So, I mean, yeah, just don't bring your gift itself. And I know we've taken some, and it's, it's very popular now to register online someplace. And you can go right down the line. You can see what everybody's already bought. Mm -hmm. And you just choose from the list of stuff that's already there. Boom. And in two days, it arrives to your door. Or you can just have it shipped straight to the couple. You know, what I'm reading is that most couples today would rather have cash than a gift anyway. Uh, that's not, yeah, you're not wrong. Yep. All right. The other the flip side of this is to not give a gift. Oh. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of saying thank you for including us on your special day. Right. And here's something to help your life as newlyweds uh, to be a little bit easier. And that's what a wedding gift is for. And you know what? If you give money, maybe they can have a little bit nicer honeymoon. Yep. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You want that couple, they're your friend, they're your daughter, your your neighbor, whatever it might be. You want them to be happy. And so not bringing a gift is so rude. Well, um, and what people, I don't think people fail to realize this, but maybe they don't take it, they don't give it enough credit, is that if the meal is catered, it's probably about 25 bucks a head. Is easy. What you, yeah, it's what you're paying for, you know, per person. Yeah. Uh, and then... All the linens and silverware, all rentals, you're paying for all of that. So by the time it's all over, you've spent probably about $40 per person for everybody to be there, mm -hmm. if not more. Ours was way more than that, but um, ours was great because it was one-stop shopping. Right. The wedding venue provided the florist, the DJ, the photographer, Consultant. the videographer, uh, everything, the food, everything was done for us. We went to one planning meeting, and we were done. And then they did everything else. That's brilliant. We paid top dollar for it, but you know what? Well worth it. My wife works full-time. My daughter works full-time. I'm retired, but I don't want to plan a wedding. So, I wouldn't want you to. Yeah. There would be Corvettes there, <laughs> loud music and amplifiers. <laughs> All right. Next up on the list is disregard assigned seating. Hmm. All right. Now, we did not have this at my daughter's wedding. But at some larger weddings, there is going to be assigned seating. And you know why that is? It's because Aunt Jenny doesn't get along with Aunt uh, Uncle Jake. Right. Uh, there are certain... Si and you know what? Sometimes different sides of the family don't get along either. Uh, so it's... And trust me, people put a lot of thought into assigned seating. Uh, they're trying to make sure that People who do get along are seated at the same table, and those who don't are not. Also, you have different cliques. Like, you have my daughter had her work group, mm -hmm. and then she had some people from University of Arizona group, and then she had her people from Sacramento group. So it's, it's easier for them if they're all seated at the same table. Rather than, oh, I see somebody I know over at that table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go sit over there. And we had family at one table. It was just, it's a lot easier. So we put a lot of thought into it. Hey, just, you know, try to do it. All right. On our list today of rude things that people do at weddings, go rogue on their menu RSVPs. <laughs> Most RSVPs have a section for reception food where guests can list food allergies and select an entree option. Those options aren't just for fun. Uh, couples use RSVP totals to determine how much food, as you were saying, to order. So if you're not really gluten-free, but just feel like grabbing the gluten-free option because you read in a magazine that your favorite celebrity is now anti-wheat, you're preventing someone else in the line who actually has celiac disease from having that meal. True story. People have been in line behind uh, other people who decided they didn't like the chicken they requested in her RSVP and thought the steak looked better. 
that patient, caterer, tried to explain to her that because she already had chicken on her plate, she couldn't have two entrees, but this lady caused a whole scene. People, dang. it's not your day. Grow up. God dang. I just can't even believe in this day and age. No, honestly, I can believe in this day and age that does happen. Yeah. Yep. All right. So this, a lot of, most weddings are on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. uh, this time of year, what's on Saturdays? College football. College football. So, you know what? If you go to the wedding and, but you're a big Notre Dame fan, or let's say you're Army or Navy fan, guess what day that game is going to fall on? Yeah. On the day of the wedding. Uh, of course. So if it's that big of a deal and you can't tape it, then... Politely decline. Don't go to the wedding. Do right. not RSVP. If you think your game is more important than your friend's wedding, stay home. Yeah, you're you're probably sadly mistaken. Yeah. But you know what? What we don't want is somebody getting there and then during the whole reception, how they go on and on of this was a pretty big deal for me because I have never missed an Army Navy game. Go screw yourself. Oh man, grow up just a tiny bit, please. Clink glasses. Until the couple kisses. That is so tacky. It's like, you know, one of those organ monkeys. <laughs> I like those, actually. Oh, I do, too. I love monkeys. <laughs> Apparently, there's a thing where guests clink their glasses with knives during the reception, and they won't stop until the couple kisses. This isn't just rude. It's downright tacky. I just said that. Yep. Uh, you shouldn't demand a performance from the couple, see? <laughs> This is their day. If they want to kiss, they'll kiss. If this happens to you, uh, we're really sorry. The only advice we can offer is this. If you give in and do it once, it will happen most likely all throughout right. the evening. Yep. Nip it in the bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ne'er-do-well. Uh, so we did not experience that at our wedding that I remember. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that happened, but... I mean, it really is. And that's that's human nature. If you can clink your glass and make somebody f perform a trick for you, you're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's just not go there. Let's not start that up. Hey, this next one. Now, on my daughter's invitations, it said no children. Ooh. Okay. So, right there in bold black and white, no children. Uh, if the invitation doesn't say that, and you have a child who's, you know, fairly well behaved. Uh, if they're not colicky, hey, bring your child to the to the ceremony and the reception. But, like I said, with videography going for three hundred dollars and up, what you don't want is during the whole wedding ceremony, when you're up exchanging vows, to have a child in the background screaming. Uh, or blurting out something inappropriate yeah, in a church. <laughs> that lady in white is fat. <laughs> so she's just weight challenged. Yeah. So you know what? Yeah, maybe don't bring your kids. Oh, you know, here's a here's a thought though. Uh, if you're sensitive, maybe you're at the age group demographically speaking that a lot of your friends have small children. Um. If you're having a church wedding, it's possible that you might be able to set the kids up uh, in a in a separate classroom away from the ceremony with a person or two to watch over the kids right. uh, in a separate room. And then when the reception happens, and you know, everything's game fair game. Yeah, yep, game on. So uh, that's just a thought right there. Yep. Uh, but, you know, be sensitive about children. If you've got a little tiny baby... It's probably the wedding is not the place. And if you can't get a babysitter, then maybe you shouldn't go. Yeah. Um, RSP for a, uh, RSVP for a plus one when you weren't given a plus one. Oops. <laughs> you know. This is right in line with the not RSVPing at all and then going to the wedding. Right. And bringing someone. Yes. Yeah. Um, instead of huffing and puffing about why you weren't given a plus one. Consider the couple's budget and the venue capacity. Not sure how to tell if you were given a plus one. Look at the RSVP card. If it doesn't say your name and guest, then you don't have a plus one. 
All right. Pretty simple. Yeah. And, and again, you, it's all about numbers. And if you've got this person you wanted to take to the wedding, don't go to the wedding. Well, and the there is a workaround, and that is call the couple and say, hey, you know, I wasn't I wasn't with somebody when you sent these invitations out. Now I'm engaged. Would it be okay if I brought one? And you know what? They probably can make an adjustment and maybe include that person. So not the day before the wedding. Right. Yes. Yeah. Make it give them plenty of time. You know, when the RSVP is due, I, I would say as long as you have at least communicated to them that you're going to be bringing one. Yeah. That probably is right. okay. Right. All right. This next one. I see this. I see this all the time. It always happens. Yep. Please don't take a vase of flowers home. The, uh, I don't know. It, Somebody had to pay for that vase. True enough. Yes. It's become kind of an unspoken rule at the end of a wedding reception. It's okay to take your table's flor floral arrangement home. No. No. But there are major issues with this assumption. First, if you do take flowers home, never ever take the vase. It's likely a rental from the florist or the venue, and you don't want to be the reason that the couple has to pay a hefty lost item fee. Secondly, there may be a plan for the florals after the wedding. Yeah, uh, Many couples give, uh, give them to members of the wedding party and close uh, family members exactly. at the end of the wedding as a thank you. Mm -hmm. And now couples are choosing to donate their flowers to nursing homes. That's a great idea. Which I think is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, fresh flowers smell so great. Yep. Uh, no, we're going to have to wrap this up, so we'll, we'll be kind of brief. Never interrupt the couple while they're eating. Oh. Here's the thing. They probably haven't eaten all day. Their nerves are on edge. Their stomach is upset. They're nauseous. They have anxiety. Um, when they're at a special table for a reason. And, you know, you can find another time to go up and talk to them. I, when I'm at a wedding and I want to congratulate the couple, I wait for a completely opportune time. Uh, not when they're mingling with a table full of family members and such. So please do not interrupt the couple when they're eating. Okay. Ronnie, you got this one here. This one is good. And then there's, there's one other that's just as huge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't grab the mic. Uh, you know what? If you want to practice your stand-up routine, this is not the place to do no, it. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, and you're likely to say something inappropriate because you got a bunch of booze in you. Right. Yeah. So that's likely going to happen, too. Uh, wedding receptions are not an open mic night. Mm -mm. Uh, those speeches aren't spontaneous. They're planned. Our DJ had everything lined out. We knew almost to the minute when the father of the bride was going to speak, the mother of the groom. Everything was really well planned out. Uh, there's not really time for you to jump up there and say what you... Hey, are you married or are you happy? <laughs> yeah. Not, not a good time for that. Uh, if they open it up to people in the audience, which we did, we opened it up for a couple people in the wedding parties, um, then that's, that's a bonus. But if the mic is not offered to you, don't seek it out and grab it and, you know, and start your, start your routine. All right, well, let's get to our final one. We just have about four minutes left. Okay. Uh, don't upstage the couple. Please. So, it's their day. Yeah. If, if you think that maybe today is the day you're going to propose to your, to your girlfriend... Oh, no. Don't do it at my reception. No. No. Uh, it is one of the, I mean, obvious, I think it's probably the absolute rudest thing you can do at a wedding or a wedding reception is to propose or make other, we're pregnant, make some other huge announcement like that. Gender reveal. It's, it's not your day. No. It's just not. Save it for a rainy day. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, today we've been talking about rude things people do at weddings. <laughs> we've all seen it. We've all been there. Yep. Uh, don't fall into any of these. Oh, boy, they are. Especially a couple of those last ones. <laughs> so yeah. rude. Oh, man. And, you know, we've got the holiday season right around the corner, and a lot of people like to get married around Christmas time, yep. Thanksgiving for that matter. Uh, and, and if you're planning a wedding, Make sure you look at what day the Super Bowl is on. 
Bingo. Okay. I won't be going to that you, one. You don't want to do that. No. Uh, you're you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. All right. Our email addresses are as follows. Lou, that's L-O-U, at mannersosmart.com. And Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, at mannersosmart.com. And our website is, ironically enough, mannersosmart.com. Wow. That worked out pretty good, didn't it? How quirky. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you watching today. Subscribe to our channel if you don't mind. We'd appreciate that. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvair Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.